You are not prepared. You are not prepared! I guess I can quit. <laughs> Alright, then I'll do this. I for almost forgot to do this. And then I do this. Oops, do. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You're listening to World of Warcraft Resurrected. I'm Chris. And this is Brandon. And it's been a couple weeks. But we're back! Again, we keep coming back. Darn it. What's wrong with us? Alright, now we're going to start off with what we've been doing in the game. What have you been doing in the game? I'm um, playing. Yeah, playing just here. Yeah. Playing. No, um, let's see. Your I mage is what level? Yeah, I recently leveled the mage to 69. Yeah, which good old Val. will be 70. Be 70 pretty soon. Uh, started yeah. doing the Karatum, and even though you don't have to have it, it's just XP. Yeah, yeah you got what? Uh, 12%? Which is really yeah. good. Consider it was only well, like a couple of quests. Yeah, twelve or fifteen percent. I think you went to two of the two of the three dungeons for the for that. I've done slabs. I need to do steam vaults next. Oh yeah, that's what that's right. We were talking about. And then uh, of course it'll be architraz, but that'll be after flying comes along. Yeah. Um. Hey, you can go ahead and start doing the tomb quest for. Uh, SSC or TK or whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll look all those up. I just, he's got so much he's going to have to do. Yeah, but it's so much easier to have fly when you do those. Yeah, he's well, he's got a lot of stuff he's got to do as well. Like, he's not going to, he can't do any heroic shit, you know, of course, because he's not 70. But Oh, yeah. Um, I still got to work on all so that. So, you but need to get your reps up, yeah. They, that I way did you get, get all my your reps. All of my reps did get up before I even did any questing in those areas to Ooh. where. Oh, that's right, you did do that. Yeah. So. Um, I'm honored with all the places that I do. It's just, now it's just running dungeons. You just got to get revered, yeah. Yeah. So, so what, um, that's about six dungeons a piece? Probably. About. Give or take, that's yeah. That's not bad at all. I did get, well, I just got honored today with, uh, with, uh, Lower City. So, that oh, one's Oh, yeah, because well. you did slabs, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Honor Hold, I think I'm almost halfway through honored to revered. Just because of those shattered halls runs. Yeah, but the slabs you can it doesn't just stop at honor. It, it'll go all the way to revered. Yeah, well, it'll go all the way to exalted. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's right. So well, shattered halls. All right, then uh, I started a new mage on my main account instead of my second account. Got it up to fifteen, but then I was like, you know what? I want a priest. So I've been leveling that priest, and the priest is in his twenties now. So, yeah. I don't have a character in my 20s. I was playing a rogue, and he's 52, but I, I mainly level him up for lockpicking, which I don't know if that's a really good enough reason to level a rogue, but... <laughs> cause There's no other good reason to level I, I got a blacksmith. I can make keys. Why do that? But, oh well. Uh, once Wrath comes out, I'll probably play with him in the... Battlegrounds? Yeah, Battlegrounds are fun with rogues. Yeah. And I don't know why, but when I sign on to a little no rogue, I get cocky and I start talking shit more than normal. I don't know what what's up with that. You remember back in the day, every time I got on him, <laughs> I, I got a little... Oh, yeah, I know. I, I, yeah. But, uh... <laughs> 
You know, my rogue is 52. My priest is 20, in his 20s, early 20s. And so, yeah. And uh, we went to, oh, talking about our alts, let's talk about our maids. We went to SSC and TK, well, he went to TK. I couldn't go because my son had a bad earache and, uh, yeah, complications and couldn't really do anything. But we went to SSC and we killed all but one of the bosses. And I said, look, I want a tank. That's why I level up my tank. It was, it's really my main. I want it to be my main. I want to play it more. I'm tired of playing what the guild needs. I want to play what I want to play. Y'all keep saying play what you want to play. I want to play my tank. And so last Sunday I tanked Gruel and Mags. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, you were... You didn't, yeah, you didn't go, did you? I didn't do anything on Sunday. I spent it with my wife. Okay, that's what I thought. And She's fixing out surgery, so... Yeah. So, uh... Did... So I take that, and they're like, Hey, you actually did pretty good. And so I went to SSC, and... Apparently we did really good, because... Like I said, down there, all of them but one boss... And uh, I, don't, yep. I think the time we were ran out, we, I don't even think we tried. Uh, no, we no, we didn't. We uh, it was we had probably twenty, maybe twenty yeah. minutes or so left. So that was pretty cool. I got a what, three, two, three, three pieces, I think. And uh, no, that was what I saw reserved. <laughs> of course, I saw reserved the uh, maze. Yeah, I didn't. Uh... Yeah, no. <laughs> Still well, uh, getting into gear. I think me and uh, the druid both rolled on that. Or soft reserved that. He got it. It's like, man, that sucks. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, we still haven't. Or was it warrior? Might have been a warrior. I don't know. I I know that now that um, Smashy has gotten the legs. The tear legs. I should have a better chance of get uh, just picking them up. Well, that's good. That's good because that's the only thing I can I need out of there. The only yeah. thing I need out of any of them is tear gear, except for when we get to Lady Vag and KT, and then when I get we get to those two, they actually drop the stuff I need. Yeah, but like I think a lot of people Vag, keep running out of time right when they get to that boss. Yeah, I think Vag or KT, one of the two, drops a. A healing weapon that I need. Yeah. And then, that better uh, not be my lights justice or I'll be mad. So, since we talked about SSC, you can talk about TK since I didn't go. TK, we went in. Um, we had been, I, I, we had bought Alar a couple of times and never, we never downed him. Never could get him down. And uh, we hadn't really given any of the other bosses a second look. I mean, Solarian, I think one time we tried and uh, didn't get it. And we hadn't given, we haven't fought Alar um, all the way through. We kept dying uh, right starting of the third phase, I think. This time we went in, and I don't think we one-shot him. But by God, we killed him, nonetheless. <laughs> If and, it wasn't one shot, it was the second one. It wasn't yeah, that much. We killed Alar. And we thought, okay. That was pretty quick. We go on and we fight Void Reaver. And um, I believe it was our second try we killed Void Reaver. And then we went to Solarian. And I think we downed Solarian on our second try. Yeah, I think they were all second tries. And uh, so we moved right along through, yeah, that took us our, our full raid time, but we got three, so now we're sitting all together, eight out of ten for phase two. Yep. We just got Lady Vaj and Kael'thas to kill. All right. And Kael'thas is going to, I think we'll get him first. Um, oh, I've seen the fight tough. for Lady Vaj, and that's hard, but yeah. I think, I think KT... Um, uh, there's a little more control that you can do. There's not so much payoff. Well, the difference is, Lee Vag, you have to... Everybody has got to be paying attention to what they're doing, because, especially 
Well, you got to look for the tainted uh, elemental. The tainted and core. And, and yeah, to that. pass the tainted core. Yeah. So, you, so then you got to have the people paying attention passing the tainted core. And so everybody's got to be paying attention to what they're doing. Well, it's that, but also you've got to watch for those striders. Yeah. And if you're not killing those striders and you get more than one up, even if there's two up, that one should be going down rather quickly. And it yeah. should be die. It should die, and you should only really ever have one, one and a half up at most. Yeah. But when you know when you start getting three, nobody's killing them. Everybody's doing their own thing. You can't control that. To where with KT, you have some sort of control over that fight. Yeah, KT, because you just got another strategy of exactly what everybody exactly. does. It's not. It's not controlled chaos. It's actually controlled yeah. to where uh, Lady Vaz is just. Chaos. Yeah, everybody's gonna be paying a whole attention. second phase. Yeah, the first phase you just practically take and spank that first phase. Yeah, until she gets what seventy five, seventy percent, seventy percent. Yeah, after that it's just chaos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's see. That's I think that's about it for what we've been doing. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll eventually get through KT and. Yep. And Lady Vag, we'll be we'll be there. All right, now news. All right, that's it for the news. Uh, <laughs> there has not really been any news. There's some old news, like um, what was it? That a guild recruitment feature of Warcraft logs, and then there's a classic arena term interview with Brian Birmingham on Wowhead. So that's really the only thing that's. And then even the guild recruitment features nine days ago, so that's even old. The school of Gul'dan loot priority burning shade classic that's nine days old. And the classic arena tournament viewers guide that's old. And after that, sixteen days. So you know, I don't really want to talk about anything. It's been like a week and a half or more. So yeah. Uh, either you've already heard about it from uh, looking it up or other podcasts or whatever. We just don't want to, you know, beat it to death. So, there you go. Don't beat a dead horse. So, now we're going to continue with our talking about raids because we did all the dungeons. We've been talking about raids and we finished Kara last, last time. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about Gruul's Lair. Now, Gruul's Lair, I don't remember doing it back in the day. I remember going there and trying it. They even wanted me to mage tank. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was yeah. like, okay, I'll just throw stuff at it. And no, you, there's a lot more to that. And that's what we're going to be going into. So, when you first go in, you see a pat patrolling back and forth. It's just one pat that, you know, you just... It's probably going to be... I think it's always usually a brute. But I, I want to tell you... All the trash... Between... King Mulgar... In the beginning instance... And the trash after King Mulgar... In... Uh, Gruul himself... Is all the same. It's the... Uh, brutes and priests... And the brutes have a cleave, so and that's in front of him. So the tank needs to face him away from all the melee and DPS, all the DPS. And there's a mortal strike that deals physical damage and reduces all incoming heals by 50%. Now, it doesn't say this in this little thing, uh, but he also has a charge. And I don't know why, but they did not put that in here. So everybody's got to stack up on his butt. Everybody is right there. Range, melee, everything right there on his butt, hitting him with whatever they got. Now, uh, most of the ones you're going to be pulling are groups of two or three. So, you know, you're going to probably want to do that. And also, the priest heal. So, if you got interrupts, make sure you interrupt the heal because it's going to be. Hell, try to it's really kill something I mean, it's, healing. It's a two-second cast, so yeah. And uh, also does 
a psychic scream which makes everybody run away so shamans have tremor totem so hopefully you try to have a shaman and it only does that group so put the shaman in the tank group because you don't want you don't want the priest and everybody f running after the tank and then everybody gets scattered and it gets a little chaotic so put the shaman in the tank group that way they can throw the trimmer totem down and then they also have renew which places a magic debuff on a nearby ogre healing them over time and it can be purged Dons. so then we move on to high king bulgar Now, this is, I'm not a tank and spank. There's a strategy to every, there's what, five bosses right there? Is that right? Uh, yeah, five. Blind Eye the Seer, Ohm the Summoner, Crosh Firehand, Kigler the Crazed, and High King Olgar. Yeah, those guys. Now, interrupts from people that are really good for uh, Blind Eye the Seer's power and shield quickly enough. Here's a list of abilities that can interrupt to heal and prevent Blind Eye from fully restoring his health. Warriors have interrupt. Priests have silence. Hunters have silencing shot. Hunters have intimidation. Warriors with approved shield bash. Rogues with approved kick. And mages with approved counter spell. Now... You're going to have... This is where you hear Mage Tank a lot. And, uh... The Mage Tank... They got to know how to spell steal. Because they're going to be doing a lot of spell stealing. And I'll let you explain that. Alright, so... Hiking Mulgore... Part of the strategy is... So, before you pull... You're going to... There's some things that you're going to have to do. Um... They prefer to use the following, you know, classes and roles for tanking, like mage. Uh, you don't typically don't think of them as a tank, but for uh, crossed firehand, a mage uh, is great because they spell steal his. Um, he's got a shield that he puts on that soaks up so much damage. So they spell steal that shield. Well, when they spell steal that shield, he casts huge. Huge uh, damaging fireballs, like pyroblasts and stuff. And as long as you have that shield, you're saving yourself. It'll it'll absorb that damage. Um, it'll it, you can absorb it for so long, and then you'll run out. But that's why you have your what is it? Fire shield. Is uh, it a mage? I think so. Yeah. Uh, um, I think you have a fire shield as a mage. Yeah, I can't remember fire or something. Um. And you'll pull, you'll put that on right as you run out of the stolen uh, shield. You'll put that on because there's a split second where he'll hit you with a, a fireball that you won't have a shield unless you have yours up. And hard. Your fire ward. Fire ward is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, fire ward. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you'll you'll cast your fire ward, and it, it absorbs part of the damage, so you won't die. But uh, it's really weird to hear people say, you know pull out your, your mage tank. But this is what you're talking about. This is what mages but live They in. also could put fire resist gear on and everything else so they can... Yes. Yeah. You want, this, you want 10k HP. Um, yeah. Really and truthfully. Uh, they did dumb it down, so if you have 10k HP fully buffed, you're fine. Um, our mages are going in with about 12 to 13, it seems like. It's something stupid. Um, there's no reason for it. But anyways, that's what they do. Now... I, depending on how you roll, you can't have a warlock assigned to tank all the summoner. Because all the warlock is going to do is enslave the the wild fell stalker that he that he summons. The wild fell stalker will then haunt the boss, which he really is. All he does is fear. He just fears everything. That's all he does. So, but he can't. He doesn't feel as he doesn't fear as the wild fell stalker. So the fell stalker. Can actually ta uh, ta tank him, and the warlock can do it solo until other things are down. Um, because the warlock can use the wild fell stalker's cleanse and cleanse the dark DK buff off of himself, so he can tank it up until a tank becomes available. But usually, you have enough tanks 
to where a tank will try to grab this guy. Because we run, I think, with four tanks. So a tank will try to grab this guy. Um, typically, he's the first one to go down. You kill the is it summoner first? Um, trying to think, it's usually the skull, the seer, the blind eye. Blind yes, eye is oh, the first one oh, yeah, 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 blind eye. Okay, we won't no, talk about uh -oh. that yet. Uh oh, blind eye. The it's a uh, blind eye. Yeah, blind eye seer. seer. Yeah. Now, moon, now, uh, druids. You can use druids, or you can use two hunters with their pets. Either way. But a druid, a, bo a moon can druid, perfect for this. Uh, the tank Tiggler the Crazed. Because while you're in moon can form, the druid is immune to polymorph. And he can, uh, and on, on the pool, you'll want to, you'll want to, want to off take on Blind Eye the Seer. But, uh, Kigler, druids just sit there and, and fight them. They can't, they can't, uh, they can't polymorph him. Because that's what Kigler does. He tries to polymorph. But every once in a while he wipes um, aggro. At his yeah, his aggro table and just as druids long as as long as the druids spamming their starfire or whatever. Yeah, and, druids can get that back uh, pretty easy. Yeah. But if you uh, don't have a moon can druid I think um, what was it moon moon moonfire, moon um whatever that one is that does their armor. It's a high threat regeneration, yeah. so as soon as it wipes, I yeah. usually hit that. So but you got the druids to do that if you don't have a druid for some reason, because uh, a lot of people don't have a moon can druid. You can use uh, a couple of hunters with pets. Uh, just their pets will fight for aggro back and forth. So just turn your growl on and your pet, and they can't polymorph the pet. They might polymorph the hunter, but they can't polymorph the pet. The pet's going to keep fighting, so you'll still have aggro. You put a healer over there with them, no problem. Uh, we had two hunters. They used to do it for us, and they killed him before we even killed, before we got to him to kill him. And then lastly on the pool, you'll want the off tank on Blind Eye the Seer, and the main tank on uh, High King Mulgar. Um, it says here, you know, if you don't, and, and like like I was telling you, if you don't have a Moon Conjured available, two ranged classes can get the job done, such as a Hunter, or even two Mages. You'll just need to commit to kiting Kigler the Crazed, as the Polymorph will force the boss to attack the second highest on threat. Yep. So, uh, that's why you always have two hunters, or you just have the Moonkin, and he can grab threat right away as soon as it wipes. Now, the interrupts I was talking about earlier, um, I should have waited till now to say it, but that's if in the event your raid can't burn through Blind Eyes of Seer's power would show quickly enough. Oh, and yeah, you, they're, yeah. The list I gave you earlier, that's what that's for. Yeah. Alright, so next, your raid needs to understand the proper kill priority for the Ogre Council. If you don't kill them, you can kill them any way you want to, if you want to make it hard on yourself. To make it easy on yourself, Blind Eye the Seer absolutely needs to die as quick as possible. He is the healer, and he's the one that has uh, the shields, and he can pretty much make your raid go from hey, we're having a nice day to poo-poo. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you can use an early heroism or a bloodlust, whichever, which that could be a, a good idea if your DPS is low to ensure that Blind Eye goes down. Um, but once Blind Eye is killed, the next highest priority is on the summoner because he's just fearing. So you want to get him down, plus he's casting that fell, the fell, a fell Hunter every now and then. Um, so you'll want him to go down next, and then followed by Crosh and then Kigler. Um, when we do it, we usually have a tank that's trying to tank, um, that's trying to take, um, home. So when I get the, when I enslave the Fell Hunter, I send it directly after Crosh, uh, to go over there and fight him and get and try to get him some, some DPS on him. Because we usually, I mean, we're downing, we're downing a blind eye pretty quick. And then we go on to home. Home goes down not too, not too far behind him. Then you got Crosh and Kigler. Uh, we split our DPS up. Uh, the melee DPS goes to Kigler, and our range DPS to go to Crosh. But usually, it's that it's that order you want to do it. You want to do Blind Eye, and then you want to kill Ohm, followed by Crosh and then Kigler. And then once all the Council's killed, and only High, Mor High King Mulgar's left, 
Uh, you should you should go to Kai High King Walgar. Tank should save all of the defensive cooldowns for phase two, because when High King Walgar gets into phase two, he does some damage, lots of it. Yeah. Chris could probably attest to that. I don't know. I've never tanked. Him. Yeah, because I just tanked him Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I have the Iron Skin uh, potion, so I pop that, which ups my armor. For two minutes, so. Oh yeah, yeah. So. They helped. A lot. That's <laughs> that's pretty much all in the council phase. Um, that's the most hectic phase in the whole encounter. Because, um, like you know, just an overview. There's five bosses up simultaneously. They're all unfamiliar tanking roles for classes like mages, warlocks, druids. Um, hunters can also help out with misdirection on the initial pull. To make sure that the bosses go to the right people. Yep. But once each each person understands what they're doing, um, the council goes down pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty soon, and, you'll have it on farm. Yeah, because it says here, like I told you guys, one it is not ideal to have melee attacking cross uh, because of his blast wave. So uh, melee, you go to blind eye, and uh, range will deal with cross. Then after that, the old thing really, real notable is he drops his tier four token. Oh well, that didn't that didn't even count. You know, killing King, he still got because during phase one, you know, High King Mogor he does the whirlwind, arcing smash, mighty blow. Uh, the tank's gonna have plenty of threat on the boss. Oh, I thought you already talked about it. I'm sorry. Uh, -uh. um, you want because your tank's gonna be on him on Mogor. Uh, during the council phase, he wants plenty of threat. He should have him positioned correctly with his back against the wall. Uh, once the council is down, all damage dealers will focus all of their damage on King Mulgar. In phase two, once he reaches 50%, uh, he begins what they call, uh, he, he gets flurry. And flurry increases physical damage dealt by the caster by 200 for until canceled. So... And he gets 200% attack speed. So increasing damage and attack speed, tanks should save all their defensive cooldowns for this phase. And any damage dealers should save offensive cooldowns to burn through phase 2 as quickly as possible. During phase 2, High King Mulgar will begin casting Intimidating Roar and Charge. Targeting a random player in the raid and charging to them. Dealing physical damage and knocking them down. This can be especially scary if the boss also happens to whirl, has a whirlwind ready to cast. Because of that nasty scenario, it is recommended that tank immediately taunt the boss and drag it out of the raid, preventing a ton of, ton of damage from whirlwind and potentially saving a life. So, the tank, the tank small guard needs to have a lot of health. He needs to have his own healer, maybe two. He needs to put his butt in the corner. He needs to put his butt to the wall and stay there, and build as much threat as he can the whole time. He's nobody else should be killing him. There shouldn't be another person touch High King Mulgar until everything is dead. So the tank should have all the aggro, because once you hit High King Mulgar, you're going to want to blow your wad to kill him as fast as possible when he gets into phase two. And you better <laughs> hope that your tank has aggro. Yep. Your tank should have enough aggro that you shouldn't even have to worry about where you are on that threat meter. Exactly. You shouldn't catch him. So you blow your entire wad getting him down. Everything you got. Yep, That's pretty much it. Yeah, because he should have all the threat in the world by the time everybody gets on him. So yep, if you didn't use heroism at, at the beginning, right now's the time to do it. All right. Yep. Now, the uh, he does drop your tier 4 token. And he drops a couple other good pieces, but it's mainly... That's what made a lot of people go for. I think he drops three pieces. Three tier 1 tokens. Or tier 4 tokens. Yeah. Now. Yeah. He did yeah, drop no, like, he one or two at first. Yeah, he dropped uh, one. Yeah. Now he drops three. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then you fight a couple more trash pools with brutes and I priests. Think three more. Yeah, I think three more pools of, of the trash. Yeah. And you go to Gruel. Now, Gruel, I don't think was that freaking hard. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it's Gruel's not as hard as the council. The council's the hardest. Yeah. The hardest to counter up there for sure. 
I think if you can get through that, you can kill Gruel. But a lot oh, of yeah. people complain they had problems with with Gruel. Well, before. before they nerfed it, after they nerfed it, it became cheese. So, so some tips for takes on Gruel. The main take and off take should be first and second on threat for Gruel. So there is a designated person taking hurtful strikes. This is important because if Malay climb on threat over the off tank, they would immediately one shot or get one shot by a hurtful strike. Tank should stay spread out enough to not shatter one another after a ground slam. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, save defensive cooldowns for a scary situation if healers didn't put healing overtime abilities on a tank before a reverberation. Then tips on melee for on this fight. Stay spread out around the boss at maximum melee range to mitigate bad RNG from ground slams knockbacks. Spread out around the room and stay more than 18 yards from other players before shatter goes out. Don't stand in cave in, which has an animation of folly rocks and deals physical damage. Don't pass the hurtful strike tank on threat if you want to live. Use offensive cooldowns early and often. This fight usually lasts longer than five minutes, meaning it is, yep. it is possible to get two rounds of cooldowns in. Don't accidentally rip threat by doing too much damage at the very start of the fight, however. Like I do with my Warlock. And I will tell you, make sure you have Righteous Fury on because I wiped the raid because I forgot to put it on. Hey, don't calm Pyroblast at the beginning either. Hey, I have... I have I feel that's a, a shot at me for how I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> Tips on range. Speaking of that, spread out around the edge of the room at maximum spell distance to mitigate bad RNG from ground slams knockbacks. Spread around the room and stay more than 18, year, 18 yards years <laughs> from other players before Shatter goes out. Don't stand in cave-in. You can pass the hurtful strike threat on... Uh, Hurtful strike tank on threat because it only targets the second highest threat with within melee range. If you are knocked towards the, the boss after a ground slam, you could potentially die. Oh, I did not know. Yeah. That. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I I, did, I just thought nobody period can do it. I didn't know the uh, range can actually pass it and be okay unless they get knocked close to him. Yeah. Yeah. True. So, that's cool. I, I learned something. But, you know, just try not to pass the, the second tank. Yep. Anyways. Tips for healers on Gruel. Be prepared to spam healing over time abilities on the tanks before your reverberation goes out, as you will be silenced for four seconds and cannot heal. And if you do, call it out. The entire raid yep. takes a lot of damage throughout this fight. So a couple of healers should be assigned to raid healing exclusively. These healers can freely heal everyone in the raid while other healers focus on tank healing. The Gorilla Counter is a very long fight, so healers should be using Super Mana Potion early and often. Druids should save any Innervate for later in the fight for healers. And you know, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you all right now. Just because you have a Druid healer in the group does not mean that you're going to get their Innervate. Oh, yeah. I don't give anybody my innervate. I use yeah. my innervate when I need it. Like it says, use it for healers, and if you're a druid healer, that means it's for you. The only time I will I will give my innervate away is if, for instance, a priest or a, or a paladin healer dies, or even a shaman, but somebody dies and we battle res them, then I'll give them my innervate if I'm okay on man to do so. That way, that healer gets back into the fight right away. But, sorry, I didn't want to go off on a tangent. I just oh, no, that's fine. Hate, when, hate when people expect healers to give away something that they that they really need. Now, um, I totally forgot where I was at, what I was talking about, <laughs> or where I was going to go. But uh, before the pool, if you think if it's new to y'all and y'all people act like they don't know what to do, um. Move everybody around into groups and say group one goes here, group two goes over here, group three goes over here, 
and that kind of gives them an idea where they should be just to say make sure you're not standing right beside the other person uh, do a slash uh, rage 18, 18 yeah yep. and, uh, so that's what a lot of new people or new raids, raids do when they do that now, now the movement speed debuff that comes up rogues can use cloak of shadows on it druids can shape shift out of out of it, and paladins can divine shield. But if you're in a tank, don't divine shield. That would wipe it. <laughs> yeah. So and then, of course, leather workers got drums of battle. Shamans can use bloodless heroism. If Grow gets too many growth stacks, he will begin one shotting anyone with hurtful strikes and likely kill the main tank with just auto attacks. This point yep. of damage usually happens around 16 to 20 stacks of growth, so the raid needs to use offensive cooldowns early and often to push this damage. Raid should try and time their offensive cooldowns with Drums of Battle and uh, Heroism Bloodlust. Everyone needs to be mindful of Cave-In, which has its own animation of the Falling Rocks, of course, and everyone needs to be prepared to quickly assess their position after a ground slam and quickly move out of range of everyone else to avoid spreading damage from shatter. Healers should be assigned to tank healing, raid healing, and prepare to use healing over time abilities on the tank right before reverberation goes out. I would also add in there that uh, assign a raid healer to also help a tank in case either A, that healer goes down, or B, um, they get silenced so the other healer can jump in there and help out and uh, just remember melee be at max range where you can still hit him spread out around it and then range should be way further out than that so there should be a problem now before they nerfed it if if group of two or three people got shattered then it would practically be a wipe but uh, they've nerfed that, so hell, I've been in a group of four and still survive. So, and then uh, this one drops your tier four legs. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah. And if you're a tank or uh, or pally tank or uh, a mage or whatever, he drops the blood mom magus blade. I want that. Hope it drops someday. <laughs> All right, and that's Gruel. That's Gruel. Is there anything you want to add to that fight? Uh, not. I mean, it's really and truthfully just stay, don't stand in the poo. And well, don't be, really don't the, be standing the beside. Thing is, yeah, the bigger the biggest thing is standing beside someone. Yeah. Um, before it was really really bad. Uh, after they nerfed it, it's not so bad now. But just, just. Don't stand near anybody else. Yeah. Act like they got herpes and get away from them. <laughs> now, on the trash pools, act like you love each other. Yeah. But our girls, they got the stinky fate. They got the stinky fate. You don't want to buy by them. So, all right. All right, well, that's pretty much it. So, uh, we're going to have another, another podcast out next week. I can promise you that. So, until next week. Have fun playing the game. As always. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us at wowresurrected at outlook.com. This show is brought to you by Heartland Production Entertainment. If you'd like to help to make the show better, go to patreon.com slash heartlandpae.